Hello everybody, welcome back to the third round of the 2019 Duck and Lake Hill Climber Open. My name is Gabriel Dow and I'm here with Bobby Cox. What's up everyone? Um, we've got a uh, good round going for you here. Bo Tillman holding that lead at uh, 18 under par. He's got eight strokes on Coda Hatfield who is at 10 under par. We have our Tulsa local Lauren Lewis sitting at three under par. Um, then we got Nick Fobel at one big and then we have Sam Hazenwinkle sitting at um, four big four big yes so um yeah hopefully we can see coda try and uh make a move on Bo here because uh, right now Bo's just way ahead of the game yeah Bo's killing it but I mean, coda's playing some really good golf too so it could definitely happen yeah okay first hole this is a hole 12 this is a par 3 455 feet um it's just a dead straight tunnel really um the basket finishes right so the two really is not there on this one, honestly. Um, unless you throw a perfect, um, like, fairway driver that has some late turn on right. it, you're you're not getting all the way to the basket. I mean, at yeah. best you're gonna have like an 80 footer. Yeah, it's already a long hole, and then with that super tight uh, fairway, it makes it even longer. So yeah. you're really just trying to keep it in the middle of the fairway. Yeah, most of these guys will just be trying to flip up a fairway driver, have it right straight. This is looking pretty good. It's going to be on the left side, but it's way down there. Yeah, he might have a little uh, forehand pitch out there. Hopefully he's not too pinched off. That looks just like your T-Bird 3. Yeah. I don't think it's a T-Bird 3, though. And that's going to be on that right side there, and that's um, not going to be a fun spot. Yeah. Here is Bo. That silky smooth form and gets a fortunate little kick out there on the right side and um, Still got some work to do. He's got a lot of work to do actually uh, it Looks a little bit high. Oh, yeah, I got shot down pretty much immediately. Yeah. yeah, and I mean at least he's dead center fairway, right? Can't complain about that Here We have Sam going righty this time he took off the sweatband. <laughs> getting a little too hot. Getting on, getting too hot. And that's actually gonna be in a really good spot for a, hopefully a three. The one going with the tomahawk, which is actually a really smart play considering you got those super accurate shot if you're gonna take that fairway. Mm -hmm. It's gonna come up a little bit short, but he'll have a pretty open look. Got Bo going with the turnover shot. Looking really nice. Oh. And just barely clips that branch. Oh no. And Sam just with a, an early release there. And yeah, I'm thinking those branches might have gotten his head. Yeah. Trying to avoid hitting it on your uh, follow through. Yeah. And Coda gets a fortunate kick. I had there. some speed on it, yeah. Yeah. Here's Nick from the right side of the fairway. He's going to be pretty well short as well. This hole is not treating these guys very nicely. Yeah, this hole had to have played over par. Oh, yeah, absolutely. By quite a bit. And Bo with kind of a weird upshot there. I don't yeah, know what was going on there. Too much hyzer but... and not enough power. and Yeah, he's going to be left about... 25, probably 25 feet. We're only giving it a pretty good run, but just not quite getting it there. Here's Nick to save par. And just a little bit low. We'll be tapping in bogey. Really good putt there by Sam. Yeah. Unfortunately, it was for the bogey, but that 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 kind of putt can get your your confidence going though. Mm-hmm. Says Bo. Oh, just a little bit left. Yeah, yeah. super uncharacteristic miss by him. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, what is going on? It's not even like it's the basket because like people are not hitting it in the center. No, except not for at Sam. All. And Lauren with a bogey. Looks like we'll have uh, Coda tapping in a bogey, and then. Is Bo taking a double here? Yeah, I think Bo is, Bo is taking a double. He's going to move the 16 down. 
Dakotas. Starting to close in on them a little bit. Yeah. Double bogey. Man, this whole ate these guys alive. And none of them really had, like, that bad of drives. Like, no, no. one was, like, totally in the woods. No. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, hole 13. This is a par 3, 220 feet. As you can see, there is a tight initial gap that you have to hit. But once you get out from here, there is, um, you really just want it to carry straight once you hit that initial gap and uh, kind of have a soft hyzer at the end. Um, you really want to avoid going right or left because, as you can see, there's just towering trees on the left and right side. Um, so, yeah, super technical hole. Really just got to hit this first gap. I believe first round we saw two or two or three guys not uh, yeah. make it out of there and yeah. they had a little bit of trouble getting up and down and you actually aced this hole oh you know when I, we did a playthrough yeah. well i wasn't <laughs> gonna say it but since you brought it up i absolutely aced it yeah i yeah. threw a well i only had a couple discs to to play with and i had a defender i just threw it really soft on a flex line and it took a massive skip yeah and right skip straight in the yeah. basket yeah definitely uh not the not the preferred line but it's all, really all i had Lauren's going to be on that left side, kind of behind those trees. They yeah, might have to just hyzer around that tree there and pitch up for three. Whew, Sam. Sam. Barely getting past those trees, and they got a pretty good slide. Yeah. He's going to be about circle's edge from there. That was one of those players I was talking about that didn't make the gap. And, and he did not make it this time. This is going to be a really tough shot. Yeah, just too much, too much Annie on that. Yeah, he's gonna be behind that tree, and he's gonna have to probably throw an overhand over the top of that tree. Yeah, and, and to also try and salvage the par. And also the the, uh, bogey. the tricky part about this hole is like from the tee box, you don't feel any wind at all. No. And and I noticed Bo actually took his time before he drove and walked all the way down like the middle of the fairway just to get a read on the wind. Yeah. So that's like how much these guys are thinking about every shot. Yeah. I know personally I wouldn't do that just because probably just out of laziness. Right. <laughs> and Bo ended up uh, right next to the basket, so he'll be able to salvage the bogey from there. It's going to be Coda for two. Getting two strokes on Bo yeah. on this hole. It's getting interesting. Yeah, making it real in interesting here. And Bo with the bogey, moving him to 15 under par, and uh, Coda's now only four back from him. With, um, we've got seven or nine holes to play. Yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't have thought that this was really going to be a possibility after watching Bo just shred it. Insane second round, yeah. but Coda's a guy that doesn't give up, and he'll put pressure on you the whole time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Hole 14, this is a par 3, 477 feet. It is um, definitely not a par 3. I'm just going to go ahead and say that. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a par 4 because the 2 is completely out of question here. Um, most of these guys are going to be throwing a uh, flex shot over the initial line of trees to uh, get to this open landing area here. And then from here, you have a big spike hyzer or a low skip shot underneath this low ceiling here. Um, it's... I'd say it plays as one of the harder holes on this this side of the uh, course. Yeah. So looks like we got Coda trying to flex one out there, and and it looks like he is going to be in a decent spot there. He's yeah. in the clearing. So yeah, it really takes a absolute crush just to get in a spot to attack for your second shot. Mm-hmm. Nick hanging hot, his little bit wide. But that's going to be an okay spot there. Lawrence the got some pretty good distance himself. Trying to kind of stall one out there, it looks like. Yeah, that's the thing with this hole. A lot of a lot of discs seem to just kind of drift right on this hole. It's hard to get the hard uh, hyzer at the end of the flight. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's going to be on that right side. Most of the guys that are on that right side are just forced to throw a big, big hyzer or something. Hyzer. Yeah, yeah, just a super spike hyzer. Totally blind of the bat. I mean, you can't really see the bass from over there either. Mm -mm. And Sam makes the clearing. Kind of turned over the disc. I'm not sure if he was trying like a sky roller or something, but 
Um, he's going to be in a uh, decent spot there. Bo going with that high ante stall shot. And he'll be on this left side, it looks like. And that's going to be uh, kind of a weird angle to the basket. Yeah, he might have a little skip shot, but we'll have to see. And Lauren, that was really impressive. Fantastic yeah. shot. That'll leave him with about 25, 30 feet from where he's at. Yeah, and Sam just didn't quite put enough to get past that low ceiling there. Yeah. I'm sure he was trying to take the back door. Coda taking that low route. And ooh, ooh, got it up high enough. Just almost skipping it. Yeah. In. Just needed a, a tad bit more left. Yeah, Bo's completely pinched off here. He's gonna have to go over the top. And but luckily, he wasn't right very far into the basket. Yeah, he wasn't very far in general. So. Oh, Lauren was way further back than I thought. Yes, yeah, so did I. And he helped to do the upside down little slide shot like Bo did earlier. And Nick oh, Fogle. Nick. Such a, I mean, he's had really Super good form. Smooth. He's had really good form in general on his drives, his upshots, and his putts. Yeah, he does. Great par from Nick there. Oh, Ooh. back to back. Nice and putt. Sam Hayeswinkle with the. Really with nice save. Or with the uh, par. Should be a birdie, but yeah. Yeah, should be a birdie, <laughs> definitely. Oh, and headband is back on. Oh, well, that's what made it go in, I think. Exactly. He's got Captain America powers going. And Lauren missing low a lot this round. Yeah. Just can't quite get the height. No. But we'll, uh, is good for par. Yeah, they're happy with that. Code as well. Not quite the disastrous hole that we've seen lately. But uh, Lauren with a double bogey. Hole 15, this is a par 3, 280 feet. This is one of the temp holes that they added on so they could squeeze some more players into this tournament. Um, this is really just a tunnel shot, dead straight. Um, you could throw a uh, mid-range or a fairway driver um, as long as it just carries straight the entire way um, and doesn't end up too far left or right. Um, you'll have a pretty easy look at the basket. Looks like Koda's going thumber here. And yeah, I like that forehand play. Seems like there's a little bit more room on that left side. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, turnover is perfectly fine as well. Yeah. And Coda Slammer worked out pretty nicely there. He'll, uh, might have to straddle out from that tree, but nothing he can't handle. Yeah, just didn't quite get the hyzer in time. Nope. He's going to be right there next to Coda. Might be a little bit deeper into that tree. Sam is just so close being really good off these drives. Just a just tiny uh, adjustment. Yeah, just tiny yeah. adjustments. Bo trying to flip over a putter here. And he's going to be in a tricky spot there. He might have some stuff in the way. He also might have a window. Um, we'll have to see. It's a mystery. It is a mystery. Lauren going high right side, squeaking That's... over all of it, and um, he's going to be about 15, 20 feet there. Oh, and Sam just a little bit low. He'll be tapping in for par. Oh, just a little bit left. Looks like he found a little skinny gap. Nick coming out and of the woods. Nick. A bit left. This is Koda for the lone birdie. Oh, just a little bit left. Or actually, Lauren. Yeah, Lauren has the got best a chance look. here. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, if we didn't get any birdies there, I was going to be On this genuinely hole, upset. Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> very surprising. But a uh, good birdie from Lauren. That'll move him back to one under par. And it's good to have these little easy holes, you know, mixed in with these incredibly tough holes just mm -hmm. to kind of get your confidence going. Oh, yeah. Makes you uh, reassure yourself that you do enjoy disc golf. Yeah, right. <laughs> and Sam tapping in for the par. Slightly setting it in there. Okay, hole 16. This is a par 3, 220 feet. Um, it's a very, very strange line. Um, it carries straight for about 50 feet and then kind of goes right for about 100 
and then uh, kind of comes back left <laughs> and does a weird S thing towards the end of the uh, fairway here. Uh, very, very weirdly designed hole, in my opinion. Yeah, but, the, um, the closest you can really get is that, that last set of trees. Uh, just like the way it's shaped, it's impossible to you know, play a clean line that gets all the way down there. Yeah. And Blaine said that he can throw a forehand flex shot in this hole, but I am not buying that. I, I, I want to yeah, see I that. I don't see it. And Coda just finding that tree, kicking left. He's going to be in a tough spot. There it is. And Nick. Stupid overstable. I think it's crazy yeah. beef. He actually fought through pretty well, though. Yeah, and, he'll be uh, in a decent spot. He'll be able to uh, at least salvage a par. Yeah. This is looking like a good line. Sam. That's about the landing zone that yeah. uh, these guys will be able to get to. And yeah, see, that's, and, what, that's uh, what I'm talking about. That's yeah. that's about maxed out in this hole. That's, yeah, that's as good as you can do. Yeah. yeah that's fine. Coda just having to pitch straight out. Maybe setting himself up for this uh, over the top shot. And that ended up right. Yeah, a little bit right. And he's going to most likely just have to pitch out to save bogey. Nick giving this a little oh. half run. And just needed a little bit more over stability on the end of that flight there. Ooh, and Lauren with a pretty good run. Yeah, really nice run. From about like 80. Koda is straddling out and just pitching up. He'll be taking a four. Yeah, and Sam just threw that a tad bit too high and found that branch. But with a surprising layup there, the wind must have been really picking up. Mm -hmm. And Sam just leaving that one low. Yeah, it's like he's not quite getting the, the spiral on it to, to get the little extra carry at the end. Yeah. It's just kind of dying down on him. Mm -hmm. And Lauren with an unfortunate bogey there. That'll move him back to even. Nick with a quality par. It looks like we got Bo, Sam, and Coda. Yeah, Coda with a double since he had here. to pitch out there. Yeah. Tough hole. All right, hole 17. This is a par 3, 323 feet. Um, this is really just a big spike hyzer. Um, I feel like this course is either spike. I feel like I've had said spike hyzer a thousand times. You're going you're going over a lot of trees on this yeah, course. <laughs> yeah, it really. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're just throwing a spike hyzer, hoping to land on this left side here. You want to avoid uh, shorting it because um, there is a pretty good downhill um, about 20 feet in front of the basket, and um, it's just not fun to go back in there. Lots of trees. Yeah, he's going to finish a little bit short left. And Bo, that's actually a pretty good shot. Yeah, he's about him. 30 feet short, but, I mean, this hole is very difficult. Lauren just barely saw in that one off, and uh, he trickled down. There's actually some water, a little pond there at the bottom of the hill. Casual? And, uh, yeah, I believe so. Okay. And um, he is, uh, I think, in, in the water there. Okay. This looks a little sawed off from Coda as well, but ends up okay yeah. actually. Um, yeah. I feel uh, like I, I, I feel like on the drive you really need to try to push it straight for as long as possible, and then just like let it fade at the end. If you yeah. if you try to go hyzer the whole way, I mean you can do it as long as you throw it hard enough, but it's a lot more difficult. Yeah, and Sam with a really good bid there. Oh yeah. Just a little bit am side. Little bit of side for Lauren as well. Man, no one can get no. it in there. It is Nick. Oh. No, <laughs> this basket doesn't want any part of any putt anywhere. That's the moral of the story. There we go. Koda, yeah, he ended up in a fantastic spot. Yeah, taking the lone bird there and um, 
He's now only five strokes back from Bo. Yeah, getting one back from last hole. Yep. This is one of the cool holes out here with the crazy elevation change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unfortunate double from Lauren. That'll move him to two over par. Sam just tapping it in. Along with Nick. Okay, hole 18. This is a par three, 271 feet. Um, there is a uh, right side gap, which uh, we saw Tommy take last round. Um, you really just wanna flip something up straight, have it ride that right side and hyzer right before that uh, tree there. And then uh, that'll give yourself a pretty open uh, inside the circle look. Yeah. Um, there is also a uh, flex forehand line. We saw Koda take the thumber line. Of course. So, uh, oh, he's going again. Yeah, why not? Yep. Yeah, but that uh, forehand line, it's really tricky. you got to put a lot of uh, flex on it to get around the that rough that kind of pokes out there. Mm -hmm. And on the backhand, you just you got to keep it low. Yeah. Those trees will eat it up right away. Uh, I've seen this line before. Throwing a little high flex line, and he's going to be pretty deep. Might have some branches to contend with on his putt. Oh, it needs to hyzer. Yeah, and that's going to be on that right side there. I don't think he went too deep into that tree. Yeah, he's only probably about 20, 25. Sam putting a move on this. Oh, hit the base of the tree. Barely catching that tree. Here we got Lauren. There we oh, go. There's yeah. a oh, ain't off the pin. Hitting the pin. I was say, Great we shot from Lauren there. So we better have one, at least one clean line there. Yeah. Sam just a little bit short there. Yeah, and Sam just keeps put, putting himself in position to where he's forced to make like a forty to fifty footer for his birdies. Mm -hmm. Just not quite getting close enough for the easy birdies. Here's Coda. Just a little bit too high. Kind of surprised there to see an air ball from Bo. Oh, oh, and I'm more surprised to see that. Yeah, that was just a spit out. Pro side and everything. Yeah, I hate those things. Not happy with the bogey there. Yeah, if Koda can tap in this par, then he's getting another one from Bo. Yeah. Lauren with a nice birdie. Nick tapping in for par there. Yeah, Koda's getting a stroke on Bo. He now has only four strokes. Yeah, and that's pretty insane. Yeah, considering at one point he was down eight like strokes, eight, yeah. eight or nine strokes, insane. Um, hole 19, this is a par 3, 357 feet. Um, you're really just playing a uh, hyzer over the right side, have it crash um, past this uh, tree here. Um, this is, uh, once again, that uh, cable basket. It is, yeah. You really got to be careful when you're putting on it. Yeah. Uh, it actually grabs not as bad as you'd think it would. Yeah, no, it's, not bad at all. Yeah, it sounds awful whenever you do make it. <laughs> yeah. But that's but, irrelevant. Yeah, but we did find out that um, Duncan Lake is actually really uh, popular for uh, equestrian acti activity, so um, there's a lot of horses in the area. and um, The law of change is spook them, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they put the cables there just to keep from spooking the horses. So. And those are two really nice drives. Yeah. Some of the better ones we've seen on this hole. Nick taking that lefty forehand. This looks a little sawed off. Yeah, just not quite enough power to get there yeah. on all hyzer. Same with the headband. That means he's in business. Oh, did, did you see how smooth that 360 was? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, that'll give him about 30 foot putt. Yeah, might be a little bit longer than that. But, um, 
Okay, was going with the big hyzer as well. And he'll be a little bit right, but he's still there for the putt. Yeah, decent spot for his two there. This is Nick, most likely just pitching it up around this tree. Yeah, just not quite enough room for the hyzer. Yeah. And this is Sam for the birdie. <sighs> just a little bit too high. He's been so close on so many putts. And Bo. And Bo. Just With, dead center. Yeah. Really good birdie from Bo. Lauren tapping it in as well. That'll move him back to even. And just a reminder, these players are uh, fighting for a chance to play on the final nine after this round. So far, Bo and Coda are the only guaranteed Those spots. Those locks, yep. Yeah. Lauren's pretty much there as well. Yeah. With uh, three holes to play. Nick tapping in the par. That'll keep him at two over par. Yeah, it's a little abnormal seeing the score differentials on on like a league card. Yeah. You know, usually it's a pretty tight race from like for everyone, but this yeah, is just this two is people killing massive. it and everyone else is playing normal disc golf. Like, yeah, <laughs> right. They're not playing that bad. <laughs> Um, hole 20, this is a par 3, 465 feet. This is another one of those holes where the two is really out of question, unless you're one of the big guns on the Pro Tour. Um, most of these guys will just be throwing a uh, big flex shot over these initial trees here and um, just trying to land in this open area to have a uh, little hyzer upshot. Yeah, we've seen a lot of drives kind of finish on that right side, which is, I guess, the preferred side since there's no trees over there. Uh, but yeah, it's super difficult to get all the way up there. Mm -hmm. Here is Lauren throwing a big old flex shot, and it looks like he's going to end up in that tall grass over on the left side. Might have gotten a little push out there. Yeah, easy up from over there. Well, I say easy. First round, we saw some not so great up shots, yeah, no. including Kota going OB. So. And then. Uh... Bo is going to be, uh, got some good distance on that, but he'll be on that right side, um, about 100 feet further than Lauren. And a really tricky shot for a lefty here, but Nick yeah. played it absolutely perfectly. Yeah, and he's going to have a super easy upshot there. Maybe a long jump putt for two. Coder's trying to bite off as much distance as he can here. Try and get those strokes from Bo. Yeah, that's pretty far. And uh, He might be in jump putt range just to get it up there close. Yeah. Here is Sam. Throwing out a similar line, and he's going to be on that right side next to uh, Bo and Lauren. Yeah, this is also another cable basket, the last one we'll see. And Sam going a little him. deep. Yeah, he pulled that right, and um, he's going to have a long, maybe about a 45-footer for his par. And Lauren coming up a little bit short. Makeable putt, though. Bo actually had a crush drive. Puts it right next to the basket on his upshot. I'll be tapping in for three. Here is Coda. Sit down. And that's fine. Yeah, there is a B back there though, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And Nick got pretty far up there as well. I didn't really realize that. Yeah, furthest drive of the bunch. It was a bomb. Left with a super easy forehand up. He'll just be dropping in a par from there. Sam on a knee, straddling out. Oh, it was perfectly on line. Just yeah. not enough uh, juice on it. Really good line. Here's Lauren. Played that well. Played the drive on the safe right side and just pitched it on up. Yep. And Coda holding that 10 under par. You got Bo tapping in for three as well. Looks like we have three pars and uh, one bogey. Yep. 
um, or four parts. Four parts, yeah, five, yeah. yeah. Um, hole 21, this is a par three, 335 feet. Um, there is a little left side forehand gap, which is a lot skinnier than uh, the big hyzer backdoor route, which uh, most of these guys will be taking. Um, really, as long as you can um, get behind the trees on the right here on that hyzer line, you're gonna have a nice little uphill look. The uh, forehand line is a little bit trickier because you have to hit this little, probably 40 foot window um, into the basket and um, you want it to not have too much ground play because um, all around the basket it's just kind of drops off and there's a lot of trees and hills where you can take some bad rollaways and be in some nasty spots. Yeah it takes a little bit of luck to get it to actually stick on that green. Mm -hmm. and yeah so. that's that's pretty common for the for the wide hyzers kind of getting left at the bottom of those trees yep. and Nick taking that left line and oh a, my god barely Dude. popping it in front of that basket that, that was so close that'd be a sick ace here's Coda taking that backdoor route oh my god two people Coda flashing it soars it right over the basket that's insane he's gonna be in a tough spot though and here's Sam Telling it to get left, and yeah, he's gonna find a uh, tree. Man, look at this way he's facing. Fairway. Just a line of trees right in front. He's forced to throw a little hyzer up shot. Lefty. And, yeah, lefty. <laughs> I'm telling you, like it, it keeps slipping by us, but that is that's so much more impressive that he can do that. Yeah, it's pretty rare. Nick and giving it a good run. Yeah, that was a really good run. With the spinning cage. <laughs> There is Lauren for two. Really play that tailwind nicely. Yeah. Getting it nice and high. That way it can drop. Coda just a little bit a little bit short left. Yeah, he was in a tricky spot. Here's Bo for Birdie. And a stroke on the card. Yes, oh, sir. Yeah. That'll move him to sixteen under par. He is uh really good at disc golf, just so he you know. He is very good at disc golf. Yeah. What? Oh, I didn't even see that. There had to have been some like wind that got in his head, and he was trying to judge it from that, and it just didn't yeah. do what he or wanted. I guess I don't know. Or release or something. Or shank. Yeah, that yeah. happens too. Yeah, we got for we got Nick e examining that uh, that cage. Yeah. <laughs> um, hole twenty two. This is a par three, two hundred and sixty feet. Um, you have an initial gap here with trees to the left and the right, but as long as you clear that, you'll have a decent look. But there is also this tree here to Such avoid. Such an annoying tree. Um, you can play it in front of it or you can play it behind it. Um, and also, once again, the basket is uh, where this pink flag is. So, um, I mean, the common the common mistake we see here is uh, sawing it off yeah. and uh, also not throwing it hard enough because... Uh, a lot of these players are scared to go um, OB into the water, so shorting the drive is a very common thing. Yeah, and both shorted it just enough to get uh, right in front of that tree right in front of the basket. It's going to be left about 30, 35. And this is looking a little sawed off, but he's going to be on that left side. He'll be left with a pretty long putt. Nick forced to throw the forehand. He's been throwing a really good forehand all day. Yeah. Yeah, it's the best one so far. Scoots out of that tree, and he'll have a long putt for his two as well. And Sam, that thing is stable, whatever he threw. And once again, he's right in the middle of this tree. And that's going to be a tough spot. See if Coda can put one close, put a little pressure on Bo. Ah. Yeah, that's tricking, trickling right to the center of that brush there. That's going to be tricky. Sam with a good bid. We got Lauren from that left side. Lauren from deep. He threw that thing into the clouds. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, 
He'll be tapping in for three. And there's Coda just pitching out. Yep. He lined up that, that shot for quite a while, and he was just like, I, I can't put a good run on this. Yeah. And Bo just laying up there. Um, I mean, he's got six or seven strokes on uh, Bo Coda. or Coda, yeah. so not a bad play. Nick coming up a little bit short. And the rest are just going to be tapping in for their pars. Yep. Sam's pumped about it. Maybe just pumped that he's done. <laughs> <laughs> and Bo tapping in the par along with Lauren. Yeah, and I'm pumped for this final nine. Get to see a, a gallery form and you got some intensity going. Yeah, all the Duncan uh, regulars coming yeah. out coming out from their RVs and tents to uh, observe. Yep. Um, all right, that is going to conclude the third round of the 2019 Duncan Lake Hill Climber Open. Um, going into the final nine, we have four players. Bo Tillman at 16 under par, Coda Hatfield 7 back at 9 under par. Um, we got Clayton Lawson at 14 back from Bo at 2 under par. And then we have Lauren, um, who is just uh, going to be fighting for that third place finish, most likely. Yeah, him and Clayton will be nine. battling it out. Yeah, so um, yeah, should be a really, really fun thing to watch. Um, be sure to tune in. Yeah, if you guys enjoyed, make sure you hit that like and subscribe. It helps us out quite a bit. Uh, you can check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and we'll see you guys for the final nine.